excited about the Lord Savior? How many excited about the God of our salvation? He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's so good to see you tonight. I'm so glad to see you on tonight. Tell somebody else, I'm so glad to see you tonight. Hallelujah. God is worthy and worthy to be praised. We have a scripture that we want to start with, and it's found in Ezekiel 36 and 26 out of the New Living Translation. And it says, I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. So with that, we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for being God. Come on, open up your mouths. Hallelujah. God, you are worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, God, you are worthy, and we exalt you. God, you are worthy, and we love you. God, you are worthy, and we give you praise, God. We bless your name, Lord God, for bringing us here together on tonight, God. Oh, God, where would we be without you? God, we thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity, Lord, to come before you with thanksgiving in our hearts. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity to come before you, oh, God, with adoration because you are worthy. God, we love you because you did it again, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you for filling us with your spirit. Thank you for removing the stony heart and giving us a heart of flesh. God, we bless your name, God. As we come here, God, gather together, giving you praise. God, we ask that you would turn our hearts, God, back to you, Lord God. We want to turn our hearts uh, to a heart of worship uh, where we're submitted uh, to the will of you. Uh, we're submitted uh, to your voice. Uh, we're submitted uh, to your word. Uh, we're submitted uh, to the throne. Uh, God, we're submitted uh, to whatever you would have us to do. Uh, God, uh, have your way in our lives, uh, in our places of worship. Uh, we give everything back to you. We surrender all that we have in the name of Jesus. God, we surrender our fears. We surrender our sins. We surrender our anxiety. We surrender our families. We surrender our children. We surrender our minds. You and is it also in Christ Jesus? This mind sends praise. This mind think on those things that are lovely. This mind think on those things that are of a good report. God, we surrender everything that we don't even understand to you, God, as you deal with the Oh God, those that have wronged us, help us God to forgive, help us God to let it go, help us God to repent, we repent for every sin, sin of omission, sin of commission, we repent and we give it all to you because we know God. We surrender what we don't even know about. Oh God, we surrender. They've hurt us. We give it to you. They disappointed us. We give it to you. They let us down. We give it to you. They lied on us. We give it to you. They talked about us. We give it to you. Everything, God. Everything, God. We surrender our will, not my will, but thine will be done in the name of 
Jesus. Open up your mouth and give God a praise. God is not my will, but thine will be done. Have your way in this room. Have your way in this room. Move by your spirit, God. Move by your spirit, God. Touch each and every one that is under the sound of my voice that they may never be the same again. May you never be the same as the Spirit of God illuminates your life in the name of Jesus. God, may your spirit take control of this service. May your spirit take control among everyone that is watching at home. May your spirit take control in the name of Jesus. And for that, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Come on, lift up a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up a shout of praise. Lord, we glorify you. Hey. Lord, we glorify you. Yes. Lord, we lift you high. Come on, stand to your feet. Lift up your hands and surrender in this moment. Lord, we give you glory. Hey, Lord, we bless your name. Yes. Lord, we bless your name. 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 We set this atmosphere for a move from you right now, Jesus. Hey! Whoa! Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Glory to your name, Jesus. Come on, lift your voice. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. To your powerful name. Hey, to your glorious name. To your mighty name. We lift your name. We lift your name. Ooh, yes, Lord. We lift your name. We glorify you. We magnify you. Jesus. Your name is high. Your name is high. Your name is high. Jesus. And we lift you high. Yes, we lift you high. Lord, we lift you high.
Lord, can you help to praise him? Sing it. Lift your voice and sing. for a move of God so lift up a shout of praise in the room Woo! to the glorious God lift up a shout of praise now do you know him to be awesome I said do you know him to be awesome well, come on, can we get a little radical for Jesus on tonight? Well, do me a favor, clap your hands like this. Come on. Come on and clap your hands. Come on, let me see you do it. Oh, you are awesome. We lift you to the Lord and Lord say, Lord, Lord. 
the next part together. Say you are awesome. You are awesome. Say you are awesome. 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 Say you are awesome. You are awesome. There's nobody like you, Lord. You are awesome. No one could pass to you, Lord. You are awesome. Say you are awesome. You are awesome. Say you are mighty. Say you are mighty. Say you are Jesus. You are Jesus. You are Jesus. You are Jesus. And there's nobody like you. Are Jesus. And there's nobody like you. Are you. Jesus. you are 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 Jesus. Now everybody lift your praise in the rough.
there's nobody like 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 no one can compare to your greatness 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 you are great you are awesome you are mighty and we worship you are great you are awesome, you are mighty, and we worship, you are great, you are awesome, you are mighty, and we worship, you are great, you are awesome. To the awesome one, to the mighty one, lift your worship. Honor and glory. Glory and honor, honor and glory. Come on, give it to him. Glory and honor, honor and glory. Come on, give it. Glory and honor, we surrender. Honor and glory, we worship. Glory and honor, we lift our hands. Honor and glory, we lift our voice. Glory and honor, we lift our hearts. Honor and glory, unto the Lord. Glory and honor, glory and honor, honor and glory. glory. your hands, lift up your voice. Use your body and worship the Father. Be exalted, oh God. And we worship you. And we bless you. And we worship in your presence. We worship in your presence. And we worship in your presence. And we worship in your presence. And we worship in your breath. Come on, and we worship in your breath. And we worship in your breath. And we worship in your breath. Come on, say you alone are holy. You alone are holy. You alone. You alone are holy. You alone are holy. You alone are holy. You alone are holy. You are gonna hold it.
and into your courts with praise. We're thankful unto you, and we bless your name. Omnipotent Savior, awesome King, Holy One, we worship you, we worship you. And we worship in your presence. And we worship in your presence. And we worship in your presence. Your sons and daughters worship in your presence. Your kings and priests worship. Worship in your presence. Your sons and daughters worship. Worship. Your sons and daughters worship. Worship in your presence. The sheep of your pasture worship. Worship in your presence. The sheep of your pasture worship. Worship in your presence. Your sons and daughters worship. Worship in your presence. Oh, what a privilege to worship in your presence. Oh, what a privilege. Let's do worship in your breath. Oh, what a breath! Let's do worship in your breath. Oh, what a breath! Let's do worship in your breath. Oh, what a breath! Let's do worship in your breath. Now let the sound of worship fill this house. Come on, let the sound of worship fill this house. Let the sound of worship fill this house. Come on, give Him glory, give Him honor. Come on, give Him praise. Let me hear those timpani drums take over. Come on, lift up your hands. Lift up your sound. Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, give Him glory and give Him honor and give Him worship. Come on, everybody. Magnify Him and glorify Him. Exalt Him and reverence Him. He is holy. He is awesome. He is worthy. Come on, you're clean and you're pure and you're just. We love you and we praise you. We adore you and we magnify you. Come on, give him all the praise. Give him all the glory. Give him all the honor. Hallelujah. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy. Come on, people of God. I want to hear you praise him. I want to see you bless him. Hallelujah. Let worship be in your hands. Let worship be in your feet. Let worship be on your lips. Come on, give him a shout in the sanctuary. Thank you. Come on, give him a shout in the sanctuary. Let's stand all over the building and give him praise. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, wave at somebody. Tell them, I'm glad to see you in the house of the Lord. I'm glad to see you in the sanctuary. I don't know about you, but I came to worship. I came to bless him. I came to lift him. I came to magnify him. I'm waiting on y'all to clap and praise. Come on, I'm waiting on y'all to bless him and honor him. Come on, make a loud sound in this house. Glory, 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 glory. Come on, church, let the sound of the Lord. Let the sound of the Lord. Rabba basata. Woo! Let a joyful noise. Come on. Let me hear your joyful noise. Let me hear your joyful noise. Let me hear your joyful noise. Woo! I want to hear your voices over the music. Let me hear a joyful noise. Let me hear a joyful noise. Woo! It all belongs to him. It all belongs to him. Glory to God. Woo! Are you ready tonight? For what God is getting ready to do. Somebody shout, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready for a move of God. Come on, I need y'all to say it like I said it. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready for a move of God. I need y'all to play it like I said it. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready for a move of God. Let me hear it. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready for a move of God. Shout it out. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready for a move of God. Let's go. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready for a move of God. Shout, I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready. Type it in here. Come on, YouTube, I'm ready. 
For a move. Come on. For a move. I said I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. For a move. Come on, church, I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. It's easy, just say it. For a move of God. Come on. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Let's go. For a move You don't look like you're ready. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Come on. For a move of God. your hands and say I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Yeah. For a move of God. Come on. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. For a move of God. Come on, church, I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. For a move. For a move of God. Come on, I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. For, for a move of God. Now shout to the king in, in expectation. In expectation of his glory. Come on, in expectation of his power. In expectation of his miracles. In expectation of his healing in expectation hallelujah we just want him tonight come on anybody want jesus come on i feel you now i hear you now glory come on glory come on glory hallelujah hallelujah glory to god the woman of God is here and she is filled with power and she is ready for the move of God. Amen. Come on, point to her and say, she's ready, she's ready, she's ready for the move of God. Come on, point to her, tell her she's ready, she's ready, she's ready for the move of God. Hallelujah. Are y'all ready? Hallelujah. Put your hands together for this singer, this worshiper this preacher, this prophet. She's a wife, she's a mother. She travels all around the world, releasing a prophetic sound and a prophetic word. And we're so excited that she's a daughter of the powerhouse, Chicago. And we love her and we celebrate her. Come on, put your hands together for prophetess. Come on, Gardner. Can we keep clapping for Jesus? Come on, one more time. Let's lift our voices while we are clapping. Let's lift up honor. Come on, let a sound of reverence come forth. We're not tired of worshiping. Come on, we're not tired of giving God praise. He's so good and he deserves all of the glory, all of the honor, all of our praise. Come on, give it to him. Those that are watching online, lift up your worship. And you are good and you are holy. And you are sovereign and you are excellent and you are great and you are mighty and you are strong and you are powerful and you are faithful and you are good and you are God somebody open your mouth and give God worship give God praise hallelujah hallelujah glory be to God hallelujah well we are ready for a move of God the Lord is already moving in this place. I feel his presence. I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord on a Tuesday night. Clap your hands for yourself. Amen. I honor the Lord Jesus Christ who's my savior. I honor our amazing pastors. Can we please roar in this place? For Archbishop William Hudson III and Pastor Andrea Hudson, we have the best leaders in the world. And I celebrate and honor my pastors and my spiritual covering. Amen. Can we celebrate this amazing music ministry? Amen. That set the atmosphere and prepared us. Amen. Really quick, lift your hands. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this moment. God, we thank you, oh God, for the opportunity to learn and to grow and to be stretched and to be challenged and to eat your word and to receive understanding and revelation that we may continue to mature 
as your sons and daughters. Now, Father, I ask, oh God, that you speak through me. Let your word, let this knowledge, oh God, that you've given me, oh God, penetrate the hearts of your people. And God, you be glorified. And we thank you that even tonight, we shall see miracles, signs, and wonders. God, we make room for you. We say, have your way. Do what you want to do. Heal, set free, touch, and deliver. Have your way in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Cup your hands one more time for God. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Well, this is an amazing series. Our archbishop taught us on last week, and he uh, launched us into greater measures of understanding of what worship is. Um, and he also told us what worship isn't. Amen. How many went back and watched the replay? Anybody watch? I did. <laughs> um, I, I want to say this publicly. Um, I am so grateful. I don't think I've ever publicly told this testimony. Um, but for those who do not know, I was actually one of the guests um, about four to five years ago. Um, and I was um, called to come in. And I was so honored. And I, I came in, and me and my team, we ministered. And I had the opportunity to meet Archbishop and Pastor Andrea. Um, and, and that's where... Um, we, we first experienced a um, connection. And um, I, was, I was serving um, at a church, and the Lord spoke to me and told me that he was transitioning me. And I was nervous about that because I was, I was okay with being there, you know? And um, I said, okay, well, what is next, God? What is next? He said, call Archbishop. So I got real nervous. I said, I'm not calling this man. He don't got time to answer my phone calls. <laughs> and so, you know, sometimes when the Lord tells us to do things, you know, uh, fear shows up, right? You begin to rationalize and say, okay, well, maybe the Lord is telling me to call him because he's connected to other churches. And, and maybe, you know, he's a door to uh, someone else that may be in need of help and that I can assist. So I called him, right? Um, and I put my own words in there. He said, well, well, I may need you here. I said, okay. God cut me real quick. He said, I ain't tell you to say that nothing about no other churches, right? <laughs> and so long story short, uh, we connected, and I was originally hired in, right? And um, I did not have a spiritual covering. I was just believing God and just following God and, you know, seeing what was next. And as I began to uh, really serve in this house, I've, I've never been one that is a hireling. When I, when I step into an assignment, I'm, I'm invested. Amen. I, I've never been the one to chase money. That's not why I do what God has called me to do. Um, but I, I come in and I really, really step in and I give my heart and I give my all. Um, the more that I spent time here, the more I began to feel a pull. And I never forget Archbishop preached a powerful message on fathers. Um, and it was during the pandemic. How many know, you know, was y'all watching us during the pandemic? We was doing all kinds of stuff. We was jumping off chairs. What a worship team, man. <laughs> we was sitting on pillows. We was doing all kinds of creative things. Um, and so let me, let me just, you know, move this. <laughs> let me move this story forward. So I, he preached a powerful message. And it was in that moment where I knew he was my father. And I was fighting it. I'm like, I don't want to. I just want to keep it this way. I don't want nothing to get in the way. And I, you know, I don't want anything to get messed up, right? Because you put your own mind in things and, you know. Um, and not that it would get messed up in a bad way. But, you know, at the time, I was so uh, ministry business minded. And I really wasn't focused on submitting under a true father. And I wrestled with that thing for a year. Somebody said it took a whole year. Jesus. But I, I remember when the Lord gave me the release 
and um, I had to do a few things, and I called them, and um, I also called my spiritual mother, and I knew that they were the right covering for me, and I joined the church and submitted under Archbishop and Pastor Andrea Hudson, and I want you all to know that it's one of the best decisions that I've ever agree with God because I didn't make it. The Lord made it for me and I came into agreement with that. And it is because of their covering and being under their oil that I am able to go out and be as productive as God is allowing me to be in the earth realm. And so I honor my leaders and I thank God for pure covering. Okay. We are going to engage in prophetic worship on tonight. We're going to engage in demonstrations. I'm going to give you some language on prophetic worship, and we're going to dive a little bit more into what worship is. All right. Um, I want you all to take notes because I want you to be able to take home, take something home, take notes home with you. All right. And um, yeah, let's do this. Somebody say, let's ascend. That's a sin. Okay, worship is derived from the old English word weortsipi, weortskipi, correction, weortskipi, and it's spelled W E O R T H S C I P E. Now, when we break the word down into two parts, the first part of the word weorth means worth. Somebody says worth. It means worth or value. And then the second part of the word, uh, skippy, S-C-I-P-E, means the condition of or quality of. And so when we put the two words together, way or skippy conveys the condition of being worthy. All right? The condition of being worthy. The word has been etymologized, and from way or skippy, we get the word worth-ship. Somebody say worth-ship. Uh -huh. Worthship, W-O-R-T-H-S-H-I-P. And it means the condition of having worth or value, okay? And from there, we get the term that we're most familiar with, which is worship. Somebody say worship. Now, although the spelling and the meaning has developed and evolved throughout history, uh, the word itself conveys the concept of worth, worth unto and worthiness. Now, when I think about the worth of God, I conclude that God's worth is infinite. Do you agree? Okay. We cannot put an ending uh, mark or a limit on God's worth. His worth is impossible to measure. And because his worth is infinite, hear me, I want you all to write this down. We can never be done giving his worth back to him. We can never be done giving his worth back to him. And further, as long as we live, we have a responsibility to show forth his worth in the earth. What does that mean? What does that look like? How do we do that? How is that carried out? I'm going to tell you this. Worship is a life service that affirms God's worth. Worship is a life service that affirms God's worth. Now, I'm not saying that without our worship, God is worthless. I'm not saying that. Um, we cannot diminish the Lord's worth. We cannot diminish the Lord's greatness. Neither can we strengthen it. Come on, somebody. God is God with or without us. But hear me, our lives should be echoes of the expression of his worth. It is a life that reflects the acknowledgement of God's worth and importance. Our lives should continually declare God is worthy. Our lives should continually declare God is worth it. God is worth my obedience. God is worth me loving my enemies because that's what he requires of me. God is worth me journeying with him. God is worth my yes to him. God is worth my committed life to him. And so our lives should continually communicate and testify that God is worthy the last time I checked uh -huh, God sent his son Jesus into the earth to die for humanity and because I was 
worth dying, then Jesus is worth living for. And so my life should always testify that God is worth my life and that God is worthy. Somebody shout, God is worthy. Come on, shout it aloud. Say, Jesus is worthy. This is what the angels, the beast, and the elders around the throne in Revelation 5 declared. They said, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And so worship declares how inherently God is worthy. Now, we affirm God's worth through a lifelong response of obedience. Write that down for those that are taking notes. We affirm God's worth through a lifelong response of obedience. That means we're in compliance with his orders. All right. We affirm God's worth through extreme reverence. That's deep respect. All right. Honor in the Lord. And then we affirm God's word through uh, uh, being submitted to God. All right. We're under his authority through submission to God, through deed, expression and a holy lifestyle. Now, I want you all to declare this. God deserves my life. God is worthy of my committed life to him. I am committed to affirming God's worth. I want you to take a moment and I just want you to think about what you just declared. I am committed to affirming God's worth. Let's go here really quick. John 4 and 24. The fourth chapter and the 24th verse. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. All right. To worship God in spirit and in truth, you must be in relationship with God. We understand and we have the knowledge that sinners cannot worship. Unbelievers cannot worship. All right. This is a privilege for sons and daughters. This is a privilege. Worship is a privilege for those that, uh, uh, that have received uh, Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We are in relationship with God. So worship is absolutely relational it's a spiritual connection it's a spiritual agreement it's a yielding to the father worshiping in spirit is inward all right what we do on the platform or or what we do off the platform the singing the dancing the playing the movement the movements all of those are expressions all right an extension of what our life is to God and so worship is inward okay worship is inward Dr. Tony Evans describes it this way to worship the father in spirit is to have a heart that that is in pursuit may I add a constant and fresh pursuit of an intimate spiritual relationship with God who is spirit and worshiping in truth um, is according to God's ways and God's word and living in accordance with that and so the only way that you can truly worship God is by being in relationship with him I want to give you four points what does it look like with being in relationship with God number one you have faith in him you have faith in him all right faith in knowing that he exists and faith to receive him as your lord and savior ephesians 2 8 through 9 says for by grace you have been saved through faith okay faith is the key to receiving christ and then you need faith and to come uh, faith in order to please god Amen. Uh, Hebrews 11 and 6 says, and with fa without faith, it is impossible to please him for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Faith is at the core of relationship with God. Number two, you know him. You know him. We're talking about being in relationship with God. All right. You know him. That means you fellowship with God. You know his ways. You know his attributes. You uh, uh, have uh, intimacy with God um, now trust lies at the core of intimacy with Jesus okay trust lies at the core of intimacy with Jesus and the more we trust someone the more we let them in right you just don't sit next to a stranger and just tell all your business now somebody have done that before but I'm just saying that's not really what you would you know okay right um, so so uh, uh -huh. And truthfully, you cannot be intimate with anyone whom you do not trust. Truthfully. 
All right, and so feeling distant from God is a telltale sign of a disruption of trust, not on God's end, but on our end. All right, so if you're feeling disconnected from God, it's not God, it's you. Do you all understand what I'm saying? All right, it means that you are disconnected in some way. And so you have to uh, have faith and trust in God in order to grow in greater measures of intimacy with God. And so you know him, you trust him. And through knowledge, quality, time, and trust, you abound in intimacy with God, the one that you are in relationship with. Number three, you love God. You love God. It means you obey God. You just talked about that worship is a lifelong response of obedience. Okay, you live in obedience to his word. You are a keeper of his precepts. The Bible says if you love me, you'll do what? You'll keep my commandments. You'll keep my commandments. It means you follow the ways of God. You follow the rulings of God. All right? Uh, uh, Obeying God uh, is a fruit and evidence that you truly love God. Number four, we're moving forward because we got some things to do. This is the last one. We're talking about being in relationship with God. Number four, you reflect God. You reflect God. You reflect him. We were born. We were made in his likeness and his image. We are called to to be like him. We are called to image forth his character. We are called to to walk like him, to reflect him, to exemplify his ways. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, do you act like Jesus? Don't answer. Don't answer. (laughs) We all growing. We all growing. (laughs) So worship is absolutely relational. And being in relationship with God, fully surrendered to him, is what causes our worship to flow from within. From within and not from an external or superficial place. Okay, in Matthew 15 and 8, Jesus deplores the religious leaders in this passage. He said, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And this is why our worshipful acts, our expressions, all right, should derive from our hearts driven by the honor and love we have for who God is and what he has done. Hear me, worshipful acts and expressions, right? Uh, They are great, but when you replace relationship with God with those things, then you step into error and then your offering to God becomes disrespectful. Let me tell you something, what you offer to God matter. What you offer to God matters, all right? And if it's not what he will require, if it's not what he requires, he will reject it. We don't have a deed big enough to make God accept what he doesn't want. We don't have a deed or an act or an expression big enough or beautiful enough to make God accept what he does not want. We see a perfect example of this in Genesis, the fourth chapter. The scripture says in the course of time, Cain and Abel brought offerings to the Lord. Cain offered produce from the ground and Abel offered the best portion of the firstborn lambs of his flock. The Lord looked with favor upon Abel's offering. And he rejected Cain's. What Cain offered wasn't acceptable. Are you hearing me? Hear me. What we offer to God is an extension of our heart posture. Cain was misaligned and which caused him to present an undesirable, offensive offering to the God of the earth. And so the Lord goes on to tell Cain, he says, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? If you do what is right... Will you not be accepted? This message rings loud today. Hear me. My offering will always reflect the posture of my heart. Will always reflect my intentions. My offering will always reflect my motives. My offering will always reflect my relationship with God. Therefore, my offering will also determine if I'm accepted by God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so we understand that worship is a life that is constantly, uh, 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 that, that is in relationship with God and that is continuously responding to God. Let's talk about prophetic worship. Because when we talk about prophetic worship, we talk about a sacred exchange. Somebody say a sacred exchange. 
a sacred exchange. Now, we engage with this practice at the powerhouse every single week. Clap your hands for the worship leaders here in this house. Amen. Come on, we can do better than that. And keep on clapping for our minstrels. They lead us in worship every week and we experience this sacred exchange, this conversation with God um, during our worship uh, uh, segments. Um, the word prophetic is defined as of relating to or characteristic of a prophet or prophecy. Prophecy, and this is a condensed definition, is an inspired utterance. Somebody say inspired. It's an inspired utterance. The word inspire means to cause, to motivate, uh, uh, to stir, or to move someone to do something. The Apostle Peter tells us in 2 Peter 1 and 21, no prophecy ever came by the will of man, but men spake from God being moved, or hear me, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Are you following me? It's important for us to, under, to, to observe that under the old covenant, the spirit of God will come upon prophets to move them or to stir them or to inspire them to utter the heart of God. And in certain instances, the spirit of God would fill people to do a specific duty. We see that in Exodus 31 and 3, where the craftsmen, uh, Bezalel and Aholiab was filled with the spirit of God to carry out a specific duty. Now, the Holy Ghost was active on earth in the Old Testament and present with Jesus in the New Testament. But there would come a time after Jesus left that the Holy Ghost would come, but in a new way. This time the Holy Ghost would indwell all believers. All right, 1 Corinthians 2 and 11, you can write that down. 1 Corinthians 2 11 says this, who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. No one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. No one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. So being filled with the Spirit of God gives us access to the mind of God. Being filled with the spirit of God gives us access to the faults of God and not his faults in totality, the faults that he wants to share with us in a specific moment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All right. So we need to understand that that being filled with the Holy Ghost means that we host the presence of God. We host the presence of God and being filled with the Holy Spirit is likened unto being under the influence of the spirit of God. And when you're under the influence of something, you are subject to its authority. So prophetic worship, this is where we're going here. We're moving into, into the understanding of prophetic worship. It is Holy Spirit led. It is not confined to a specific framework or pattern. It is not confined to a set list. Prophetic worship is being led of the spirit all right in the union of prophetic and worship hear me believers experience an exchange with God it's a sacred exchange where his presence is palpable and his truth is revealed somebody say revealed as we open our hearts in adoration the Holy Spirit breathes inspiration there's that word again the Holy Ghost breathes inspiration, pouring out his presence in our midst. Heaven touches earth, hearts are stirred, and lives are transformed. I want you to see prophetic worship as an inspired moment. It's an inspired moment. It's an inspired moment. It's a beautiful open exchange between the bride and the bridegroom. Okay? It's an inspired moment. What believers express to God is inspired by who he is, by our intimacy with him, our experience of him, and our obedience to him. Now, we're talking about during an inspired moment, during prophetic worship. We experience this every single week. All right? And then as spirit-filled believers... As spirit-filled believers submitted to the Spirit of God under inspiration, we also um, have access to communicate heaven's agenda. It is the will of the Father, which is the testimony of Jesus. All right. Now, worship is vertical. Somebody point up. Right. Archbishop told us yesterday that worship, it ain't got nothing to do with us. It's all about God. 
So when we worship, our language, our heart, our communication, our sound should be Godward. Worship is not give me strength, increase my faith, make me better. That has everything to do with, with the man, okay, with us. Worship is you are holy, you are wonderful. I love you with my whole heart. Worship is God word, right? It's vertical. Now, prophetic worship has both a horizontal and vertical focus. All right? Horizontal. Somebody wave your arm like this. Yeah. Okay. Horizontal. All right? Do this. Actually, point to your neighbor. Okay. Good. We know that worship is vertical, but prophetic worship has also um, has a horizontal and vertical fo focal point. Horizontal refers to the songs, the words, or any other expression being man-focused. So when we lift up our worship to God, all right, worship is God word, is vertical. All right, doing a moment, an inspired moment, prophetic worship. What happens is God then responds to his people. And so then it becomes manward, man focused. So you started off worshiping God. You started off with your language and your sound being directed to God. But then heaven opens its mouth and begins to speak to man. And then that's what brings us into a moment of exchange with God. And it becomes a prophetic worship moment, an inspired moment. Are you all following me? All right, so uh, horizontal refers to the communication being to God's people. All right, really quick, 1 Corinthians 14 and 3, and then we're going to move into some demonstrations because I want you all to, to really grasp it, and I want you all to take this home with you. One of the things that I'm on a mission to do is to bring the believers into the understanding that you do not have to wait till you get to corporate gatherings, or you do not have to wait till you get to church in order to worship, in order to experience an inspired moment, in order to engage with God. You don't have to wait till you get to a you can do this at home. You can practice this in your car. And what I mean, like, you're, you're, you're engaging with these practices, right? This is something that you can do beyond the four walls of the church. Okay, 1 Corinthians 14 and 3 says, when you prophesy, you edify, you exhort, and you comfort the man. You edify, meaning you build up. You exhort, you encourage. And then you comfort the man. You bring relief to someone's life. All right, 1 Corinthians 14 and 5 says he desires for all to prophesy. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is because some people get afraid. They say, I can't do this. I can't prophesy like Pastor Lamar. <laughs> I can't prophesy <laughs> like Pastor Paula. You can prophesy according to your faith and release what God is saying through you to you and to the people around you. Amen. The prophetic isn't spooky. The prophetic isn't crazy. The Bible tells us that he desires for us to prophesy. And so prophetic worship builds up the church. Prophetic worship encourages the church. Prophetic worship brings clarity to the church. And we should all be engaging in this practice. There are several scriptures that marry prophecy and music. All right, First Chronicles 25, 1 through 3 tells us that David, together with the commanders of the army, set apart some of the sons of Asaph, He-Man, and Jedidah for the ministry of prophesying, accompanied by harps, lyres, and cymbals. We are also told that the prophet um, Elisha and and Ezekiel incorporated music in their into their prophetic ministries. The first prophetic song, you can write this down, the prophetic first prophetic song in the Bible is Moses and Miriam's song. We see that in Exodus the 15th chapter. After God delivered his people at the Red Sea, Moses and the Israelites released a song into the earth. They sang unto the Lord. Now it had to be a prophetic song because the song actually lists the happenings of the uh, uh, of the miracle that had just taken 
taken place in the chapter before um, leading up to the Red Sea in chapter 14 they did not know how they were going to cross over but in chapter 15 they were singing a song about the miracle that just took place and I believe that as you move in faith on tonight because we're going to engage in prophetic worship together you may be in a place and in a chapter where you don't know how God is going to work a miracle but on next week and for some of you all tomorrow you're going to have a new song of victory you're going to have a new song of healing you're going to have a new song of breakthrough you're going to have a new song of deliverance I wish some people would catch on to this word come on by faith I'm in one chapter but I'm getting ready to cross over and deliver a song into the earth realm that's going to testify of the goodness of God that's going to testify of God's love for me that's going to testify of what God has done in our lives somebody open up your mouth and shout Have a seat for a second. Hallelujah. I believe that. I believe somebody is getting ready to release a song tomorrow. By 8 p.m. tomorrow, you're going to have a song in your mouth. Hey, it's for somebody in this room. It's for somebody in this room. You get ready to sing of the miracle. You get ready to sing of the healing. You get ready to sing of the breakthrough. You're getting ready to sing of salvation. You're getting ready to sing. I receive it for myself. I'm going to sing by tomorrow at 8 p.m. There's going to be another song in my mouth. By tomorrow this time, I'm going to sing a new song unto the Lord. I need some people to open your mouth and shout in faith. It's already happening. It's already on the back of God is moving right now. I see God moving on somebody's job. A song of promotion. I see the boss calling you into the office. A song of promotion. God's getting ready. God's getting ready. God's getting ready to do it. Oh, my, 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 my. oh I feel that promotion huh? on somebody's job. Increase in your pay. Prophet RJ, new keys, new keys, new keys. I prophesy. 
Pepe, hey. New keys, hey, Talabando. God's transitioning you out of the place that you live in. Oh, my goodness, a new song. A new song is coming forth. A new song is a song of keys. You gonna say, I got the keys. I got the keys. I got the keys. Somebody shout, I'm getting ready to sing a new song. The future is tomorrow, mama. The future is tomorrow. We don't gotta wait five years to see what God is doing and manifesting in the earth realm. I, I can receive it tomorrow. Now by faith say I'ma sing tomorrow. I'ma sing tomorrow. I'ma sing tomorrow. You believe it? I need to hear the voices shout. God's gonna do it, and you're gonna open your mouth and sing. God's gonna do it, and you're gonna open up your mouth and rejoice. God's gonna do it, and you're gonna open up your mouth and proclaim it. God's get hold on I feel it, y'all. Ooh, I feel this thing. I feel this thing. Now take 30 seconds and thank the Lord. Clap your hands and thank him. chapter today I prophesy tomorrow is a new chapter and you're getting ready to sing a new song that will testify of what God did how he did it and you're gonna give him glory you can keep that sound we're not going to continue to flow. And in this moment, we're going to move into activations and demonstrations. 
We understand that worship is a lifestyle. The expression, prayer, dancing, singing, moving, playing instruments, serving. Those are expressions that are an extension of our life service unto God. Prophetic worship invites the Holy Spirit into a moment. It becomes an inspired moment where God is leading us. And as we lift up awe and as we lift up adoration, heaven begins to sing to us. Heaven begins to speak to us. The testimony of Jesus is revealed. And we engage in a sacred exchange with heaven. Now this is a practice that we're all called to move in, to engage in. Glory be to God. Paul urges us to move beyond persuasive words and to move in the demonstration of the Spirit's power. And prophecy is one of the demonstrations of the Spirit's power. I want to, in this moment, I'm gonna bring up my mentees. Clap your hands for them, they're gonna come up. And they're gonna help me carry out these demonstrations. Hallelujah, glory be to God. The presence of the Lord is here. He's already begun to speak. Woo. Oh my goodness, hallelujah. Now I'm gonna give you a scripture that describes what prophetic worship, what the experience can entail, okay? It's Ephesians 5, 18, 18 through 19. Ephesians 5, 18 through 19. Paul writes, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. This scripture encompasses what a prophetic worship experience can entail, what an inspired moment can entail. And we experience this every single week. Now, as I begin to look into the scripture, I begin to see both common and new prophetic worship terms. I'm going to introduce them to you all tonight that are necessary to bring identity to what a person is actually moving in, what a person is actually engaging in, all right? Somebody say, let's ascend. Okay. Songs from the Spirit is what we have in modern day phrase, the song of the Lord. Somebody say, the song of the Lord. Now, when somebody says, release the song of the Lord, or you may hear somebody say, that was the song of the Lord, or I birthed the song of the Lord, what you are saying is, God released a song through you. It is what God is speaking. It is, it's his heart. It is what he is saying, and you release it. All right? Archbishop does it every single week. All right? All right, there have been times I would mount the pulpit or the platform, and the Lord would begin to speak to me. I'll never forget I was at a conference, and I'm always pressing into God, and I'm asking the Lord, what would he have me to say? Because as a spirit-filled believer, one that is submitted to God and moving under inspiration of the Holy Ghost, I'm open to what God wants to speak through me. All right, and so I stepped um, up to the microphone, and the Lord began to tell me to sing that, that there was an unlocking coming to the wombs of his people. And I began to sing, I'm unlocking wounds. That's what God was saying. Get ready to birth. God was speaking it and I began to sing it. I'm unlocking wounds. Get ready to birth. I'm unlocking wounds. I began to hear that song and I began to sing it. It was God singing through me. And because God was singing it through me, he was speaking it to me and I was giving sound to it. It is the song of the Lord. And so I'm going to have Shannon, cup your hands for Shannon. I'm putting her on the spot. She's getting ready to demonstrate the song of the Lord. All right. Now we're going to pray for a second. All right. And by faith, we're all going to believe that God is going to sing through Shannon. All right. 
Lift your hands. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this moment of activation. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. We thank you for the demonstration of the spirit's power. Now, by faith, God, we believe that you will release a song through your submitted vessel. We thank you, God, for the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy. And we open up our hearts to you right now. Come on, open up your heart. We open up our hearts, our minds to you to receive what you will say. This shall be a song from the Spirit, the song from heaven, the song of the Lord. Now I want you to lift up your worship for 30 seconds. Come on. We're worshiping because we're in agreement. We're responding to God. Come on. This is a sacred moment. We give you honor. We give you glory. We, we give you praise. We exalt you. We adore you. We love you. You are amazing, God. Come on, a few more seconds. Come on, lift your worship. I'm pulling you out and I'm pulling you through to the nations you go. I'm pulling you out and I'm pulling you through to the nation you go. I'm pulling you out and I'm pulling you through to the nations you go. Oh, I'm pulling you out and I'm pulling you through to the nations you go. I'm pulling you out, pulling you out, pulling you out, pulling you out. Pulling you out, pulling you out To the nations you go To the nations you go He said To the nations you go I hear the Lord say To the nations you go Oh, to the nations To the nations you go I'm bringing you forth, bringing you through To the nations you go I'm calling you higher, calling you high To the nations you go to the nations you go. Come on, let's go. To the nations, to the nations, to the nations, to the nations. We go. To the nations, to the nations, to the nations. He's calling you. To the nations, to the nations, to the nations. I hear the Lord say. To the nations, to the nations, to the nations. Come on, if you receive it, come on, lift up your worship. Yes, God, that is the word of the Lord. That is the song of the Lord. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Now open up your mouth and give God praise. He says he's pulling you out to the nations you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Somebody said receive that. Okay, then the scripture says sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. All right. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. The first one was sing songs from the spirit. All right. That was the song of the Lord. Now sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Sing from your heart to the Lord is what we call the song of the bride. Say the song of the bride. The song of the bride. That is the heart of the believer to God. We are the bride of Christ. And so when we're lifting up our heart song to the father, we are releasing the song of the bride. Somebody say the song of the bride. All right. And so Mother Minty Samir, she's going to step forward and she's going to demonstrate the song of the bride. Okay. All right. Let's lift our hands. And I want you to lift up worship for 10 seconds. God, we thank you. We honor you. God, you are good. You are worthy. You are so holy. You are worthy to receive honor and glory and power. We bless your name. And we lift this song to you. You're beautiful. There is no one like you, Lord. You're You're 
you to lift your hands and I want you to lift your song to God right here come on lift up your song I want you to sing to God in this moment what is your heart singing to the Father come on come on yeah sing sing he wants to hear your voice sing yeah come on yeah come on raise that I want you to sing. right you come on spend this time come on oh come on let's bow in his presence yeah and we worship you and we honor you the scripture mentions psalms Psalms can refer to the book of Psalms, which is actually five collections or five books of praise, worship, and prayers that were actually scribed to be sung. Psalms were scribed to be sung. And so even in your own time at home, you can open up the Bible and you can begin to sing the Psalms. And so I'm going to have Jasmine Martell. She's going to come and demonstrate singing the word of God the Psalms. And this shall be the 
generation that seek his face. Oh, and this shall be the generation that seek his face. And this shall be the generation that seek his face. And this shall be the generation that seek his face. Oh, lift your hands, all ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory, 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 and the King of glory. Shall come in, the king shall come in, the king shall come in. Who is this king of glory? 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 He is a king of glory. 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 Oh, who's the king of glory? Yes, who's the king of glory? Oh, who's the king? worship or spontaneous all right and to sing spontaneously it doesn't mean that you're not under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost all right it means that you are inspired what you're singing or what you're saying is inspired by what was just saying by what was just done or by what was just said somebody say spontaneous all right come on Sam Thank you for lifting. 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 
you for lifting You're my glory Thank you for lifting Glory Thank you for lifting Say thank you for lifting Thank you for lifting Say thank you for lifting Thank you for lifting Yeah Thank you for lifting Yeah to restrict you all to doing specific terms. Okay, we're just going to do this. We're just going to do this. We're going to do this. It's to help you understand what is being done during an inspired moment, which is a prophetic worship experience. All right, now, Sam, he actually sang another scripture that wasn't wrong, but that scripture came to him because it was inspired by what Jasmine Martell had just released. All right, and so... And so... And so, even spontaneous moments can become the song of the bride. Right? You get what I'm saying? When you're, when you're singing the scripture, it can become the word of the Lord to you. And the song of the Lord to you. Do you get what I'm saying? Now I want you all to clap your hands for what just went forth. We're getting ready to shift for a second. I want you all to understand that God also uses pre-written material in these moments. And pre-written material doesn't mean that it's not prophetic. There have been moments where I stepped into the room and the Lord told me to sing a certain specific song. It was already written. It becomes prophetic because God is telling me to sing it. All right? It, is, it becomes the word of the Lord or the song of the Lord to his people or even to him because God is requesting it to be sung or it to be said. All right. I want to move into this because I want all of us to, to do this. And I want you to leave with this. All right. Another thing that we engage in during an inspired moment is prophesying the word of God. You may be growing as a prophetic worshiper or a prophetic believer. You may feel unequipped to prophesy. Some of you all may be learning how to hear the voice of God. One of the things that is going to help you is you opening up the Bible and actually prophesying the word of God. This is a practice that you can take home with you, right? Open up the Bible, find a scripture, say the scripture, and then prophesy to yourself according to what the scripture is saying. All right, and we're going to demonstrate that now. You ready? All right, clap your hands for Prophet Joshua. Come on. I want you to give the scripture, and I want you to actually prophesy the scripture. Isaiah 43 and 19. It says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and a river in the desert. Can everybody do me a favor and just say hello? The Lord says, say hello to a new dispensation and a new era. God says that I'm doing a new thing in each and every one of your lives. Many of you have been in desolate places, in your emotions, in your dreams, in your ministries, in your families. But the Lord said, I ride in desolate places, waiting for a chance to restore. And God says that you're about to experience restoration. And I'm not restoring you to the place you were, but I'm restoring you to a greater place, says the Lord. So get ready for the new. Make room for the new. Believe for the new. You have new peace, new dreams, new aspirations, new hopes, new relationships, new opportunities. The Lord says, behold, I make all things new. If you receive it, come on, open up your mouth and shout out to the Lord. God is doing a new thing. Now, that scripture, Isaiah 43 and 19, he's, it literally says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Say that, Behold, 
I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Okay. Ooh, ooh. I just got told. No, no, no. I, I just, okay, I want to do this really quick. Come here, the lady with the, 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 the brown hair. Yes, come here, come here. Clap your hands for her, she's coming. Clap your hands, she's coming, come on. I want you all to know that you can do this. You don't have to wait for the prophets of the house. You can do this yourself. Let's give her a mic. The Lord highlighted you. We're going to use the same scripture and you're going to prophesy to yourself. Okay? The Bible says, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. And what you can say is this, just according to the word of God, according to the scripture, I prophesy that God is doing a new thing for me. Now it shall spring forth. It's as simple as that. You don't have to add no words to the word of God. His word, come on, the Bible is his mouthpiece. The Bible is his voice. The Bible is his word. You can prophesy to yourself, okay? So I want you to take the mic and you're going to say according to the scripture and you're going to prophesy the word. You ready? Go ahead. Hallelujah. According to the scripture, God I can't hear you. do a new thing in my life, in my finances, in my home. Hallelujah. God is going to do a new thing in my family. In the mighty name of Jesus, he's going to do a new thing. I prophesy in my life. I prophesy in your life that he's going to do a new thing for you. Anything that you thought that you couldn't do, God is going to do it in the mighty name of Jesus. Have faith. Have hope. God is going to do it in the mighty name of Jesus. And I believe God. And it is already done because he said it in his word. And it shall be done. Go for it. Go after it in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, shout. I feel God stirring his believers tonight. Come on, we are a prophetic people. We are a prophetic people. Y'all don't leave out prophesying the word of God. We ain't waiting until Sunday when the prophets mount the platform. On Monday, you're going to prophesy. On Tuesday, you're going to prophesy. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, in the midnight hour when you can't call nobody, open up the Bible and prophesy the word of God. One more, one more. The lady with the green, Come on, clap your hands for her. She's coming. God highlighted you. I feel God is breaking muzzles off of mouths. Come on, clap your hands. She's coming. We have a mic for her. Oh, this Shelly sister. Come on, come on, clap your hands. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. By faith we believe, by faith we receive. The scripture says, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. You can just prophesy the word of God. Say, according to the scripture, I prophesy. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Go ahead. According to the scriptures, I prophesy that God is doing a new thing in my life. He's doing a new thing in my family. Hey God, I thank you. I praise you. God, I glorify you. God, I thank you for putting me in this church. I may not be here every Sunday, but God, I thank you. I praise you. I glorify you, God. You are my father, and I thank you. And God is doing a new thing for you, and God is doing a new thing in your life. Lift your hands, 
and God is doing a new thing in your heart and he's healing you emotionally and the pain that you felt for the last eight years God is erasing it tonight and the Lord says I'm layering you layering you with strength and more power is coming upon you and I even pull you out of the cycle of regret and the Lord says I'm pulling you out of transition and the Lord says he pronounces over you tonight a new season you prophesied it and today begins your new day a new dawning a new season and the Bible says now it shall spring forth and God says now I will do a new thing now I will do a greater thing and you shall see it with your own eyes and the Lord says even through your submission to God and even through your obedience to the Lord with being in this house God says I'm getting ready to elevate you and expect your life to get ten times better quickly swiftly suddenly and the Lord says I will use you you are my child you are my daughter and I will use you for my glory give God praise and shout out to the Lord for what God is doing somebody shout for the new thing for, for the woman of God strength and power Oh, and I see favor hidden your life. I see favor hidden your life. Favor, favor. Somebody point to the woman of God and say, Favor. Woo, I see chains breaking. Chains breaking, oh, chains breaking. The breaker is here. The breaker is here. The breaker, oh, the breaker. The breaker is here. Breaking chains and making ways. Woo, Shabahaya. All right. I'm way beyond time. Hallelujah. We got one more. And then I'm going to give the mic over to you, Archbishop. Now, the scripture says, make music from your heart to the Lord. And one of the things that I do when I travel and I am teaching and training minstrels, and one of the ways in which I activate minstrels is I, I read a scripture, right? I read the actual verse, the word of God. And the scriptures, I'm sorry, the minstrels, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, they begin to release a sound that is in alignment with the tone and the theme of the scripture. Right? This helps the minstrels to move in the prophetic. Now we have prophetic minstrels, and we're going to do it tonight. I'm going to read the scripture really quick. I want you to go to Psalms 24. I believe it's the last three verses. It's five through eight. Let me see really good. Start right here. All right, there you go. Seven, seven through ten. All right. Now we already sang this. All right, so we can cut all the way out. All right. He's going to read the scripture. And then you all are going to produce a sound in alignment with the tone and the theme of the word. Okay? Y'all ready? All right. You ready? Read! I'm sorry. I always wanted to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I always want to do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I always want to do that. As a little child, I used to be like, I want to do that one day. I want to grow up to be the reader. Okay. So let's do this. Can we all come in individually? How to? Okay. We'll start off with the drummer. Okay, and then D-Hern, you take over and you tell who else to come in, all right? He's going to read the scripture, and then the minstrels are going to pick up the sound that's in alignment with the tone and the theme of the message, and they're going to produce a sound, come on, that is uh, uh, inspired by the Holy Ghost. All right, you ready? I'm for real this time. Read! Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. 
and the King of Glory shall come in. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of Glory. Somebody that wants your life to be changed by the presence of the Lord. Come on out of your seat. Come on down. I want my life to be changed tonight. I want my life to be changed tonight. I want Jesus to come in and fill me with his Holy Ghost. I want Jesus to come in and wash me in his blood. Come on, tell somebody we're in the presence of the Lord. We're in the presence of the Lord. Everybody standing if you can. We're in his presence. But thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. Thy glory and the lifter of my head. Come on, say for thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. My glory and the lifter of my head. Come on, let's.
let's just sing that again, everybody. Thou, O Lord. Thou, O Lord, are a shield for Come on, my glory. Glory and a lifter of my head. Come on, y'all got it. If you need to be saved, come on down. Thou, O Lord. Thou, You need to be washed in the blood. You need to be born again. My glory, come on. I'm already saved, but I need a church. I need a pastor. Don't leave this place uncovered. Don't leave this place. Come on, uncovered. Everybody say, Thou, O Lord. Shield, give God some praise. Is that cookie? Hey, girl, y'all clap your hands and make some noise. Come on and give him worship and give him praise. Now, oh Lord, now, oh Lord, is there somebody else tonight? Is your night? My glory. Give God praise for one. Come on, give God praise, y'all. Now, oh Lord, are a shield for me. Thy glory, thy glory, and the victory of my head. Come on, give God a praise and give Him a shout. Wow, what an anointed experience we have had tonight. I can't hear y'all. Give God some praise. What a powerhouse. Come on, let's praise God, my prophetess, Kamar Gardner. Come on, y'all, make some noise. And for her awesome team, they were all anointed. They came ready. They was power packed, powerful, amen. Wow, thank you, prophetess. How many learned something tonight? Amen. Listen, we don't take the atmosphere in the powerhouse for granted. I hope y'all don't know, don't understand that it's a blessing to be in an atmosphere of praise and worship. Amen. Even last week, you know, I came down, I was just okay. And we began to thank God. Y'all remember that praise? That thing did something to me. Y'all stirred me up. Y'all set me on fire. That don't happen often. You understand? Glory to God. But y'all praise God, so you took me up in here. You hear me? That's some power. Amen. Y'all got some power. The praise was in here all day Sunday, Sunday night. The glory of God was in this place. Will y'all hear Sunday night? The power. Of, I'm telling you, you can feel the spirit of God. You can feel the presence of God. And tonight, prophetess, come on, y'all. What an atmosphere. It's good to preach in this atmosphere. It's good to sing in this atmosphere, to praise in this atmosphere. Amen? Order in this atmosphere. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Get your offerings together. Get a seat in your hand. I'm going to tell you something real funny. Kamar came here 10 years ago. I didn't like her. I said, don't y'all bring that woman back here no more. It's the truth. <laughs> but look at what the Lord has done. You hear me? That lady got an anointing, huh? She got some power on her. Some glory, amen. Y'all clap. The Lord has done a great work in the woman of God. I'm telling you. I said all that to encourage you to let you know she has not always been where she is. And so you never know where God is going to take you. If you yield yourself, if you submit yourself, if you commit yourself, God can do a great work in your life. And so we're proud of you, prophetess. Amen. So amazing. So amazing. Amen. I love this church. I went to the children's church. We, they had a good movie back there. Where my babies at? Y'all make some noise. The children, I wanted to stay back there. It sound good. The youth church was so dark, I didn't know they was in there. They was watching the movie too. Sound like the show. Where the youth at? The youth. They watched the movie in there. They still in there? Amen. What was the name of that movie? 
left behind. They didn't upgraded it. They showed that when I was a kid. I said, this ain't no left behind. We couldn't obviously see the people. They was all clear and stuff. I mean, it looked like a real movie. Y'all remember that left behind? Where y'all at? They upgraded it. They didn't just. I love this church. We got stuff for the children, stuff for the young people, seniors, Bible class in the daytime. I mean, y'all got it going on here. All right. So um, Saturday, April the 13th, the women of the powerhouse, all the women, wave your hands. Our first lady wants to see you. I am every woman. It's a one-day event from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Go to our website, powerhousechicago.org. Amen. Family game night is April the 19th. April the 19th, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. We're looking for y'all. This Sunday is what? Just church. 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock. Yes. Nothing special, right? Hallelujah. Amen. Holy Ghost is here. Amen. I love you, powerhouse. I really do. I appreciate y'all. Stand on your feet all over the building. God bless you. Now, Father, as we leave this place, but not, I'm continuing next week with Teach Me How to Worship. Amen? Praise the Lord. What she taught us today, we're going to use it on Sunday. Amen? And our servants. Let's encourage prophetess on Facebook, on YouTube. Encourage her. Let her know you were blessed. Minstrels, y'all were amazing. Powerhouse singers, y'all are awesome. I love you. All right, fathers, we leave this place, but not from your presence. Cover us with your blood. Put your angels around us. Protect us. Give us an awesome week. In Jesus' name, amen. Wave at your neighbor. Say, you are a resurrector. Come on. God bless you. Sow your seed. Bring your tithes. Bring your offering. Begin to give. And watch God give it back. 100 folks. Our house. This is the greatest church in the whole wide world. Big. Facebook on the website. Uh oh, Mike Maloney left his times. Give and it shall be given unto you. I'm putting it in, Mike. Uh oh, don't drop it now. Hey, that. Thank y'all for giving.